I'm hoping we're live. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Welcome to Environmental Social Justice. I am so sorry. StreamYard has this horrible delay when we go live. So we just sit here thinking, are we on? Are we not on? I have no idea. So welcome, everybody, to another episode. Today, we have Mr. Art Wexler. He is a financial advisor and strategist with Trusted Capital Group in Los Angeles. So welcome, Art. Nice to see you. Thank you. Today, we're going to be talking about financial situations, social justice, and any kind of advice that Art can give to, you know, not everybody can hire a financial strategist. So Art, if you could just start off with um, someone who's just starting out working and maybe they're paycheck to paycheck, is there any little tips or tricks or advice you could give to get them to save and begin to build their retirement plan? Because retirement's your specialty. They just need to just do it. And I do have a 25 and 23 year old and a 14 year old, but they're right in that time frame. Yeah. And there are a lot of just different factors. You need a budget. You need to know exactly what you're making, what you're bringing in. And don't make a budget too tight because if it's like down to the penny, you're never going to live within it. Okay. But um, anytime you go to a sale, like Black Friday, and you save 20 to $30, use that money for savings because it's money you're going to spend anyway. Yeah. I start by building, and I'm just going to rattle and just throw something Please. through the screen at me. Um, just have a savings account, a credit union account, something where the money is going to go into initially because you want emergency savings. Because if, yeah. if your tire goes bad and you need something, you do not ever, ever want credit card debt because you're paying 19%. Um, it makes no sense. I can't even give Joel an investment that's going to make 19% guaranteed. And that's what a credit card company is getting. Now, how do you, okay, so this is all great things to do. I think everybody does need to save. We need to be taught how to save. Lord knows, everybody knows how I feel about that. But we're living in a world right now where the cost of living has gotten astronomical for people. Inflation. But, but wages haven't really gone up. So people are trying to honestly put food on the table and keep lights on in their in their homes. And I think we're, you know, we've I mentioned this before that it, it feels like we're it's literally becoming have versus have not. The middle ground is starting is eroding at a breakneck pace. So when it comes to trying to plan for the future, how can you do that? How do you advise people to do that when they're looking at those situations, which is just trying to survive? You do both. And we're talking about like people just into the workforce. Usually the best times to save I found are people right into the workforce. Um, and then people whose kids are out the door to college because everything in the between life happens. Um, sometimes you want a real estate agent and I'll give you other names than Joel, but there's quality real estate agents everywhere. Um, but Joel's oh, fantastic. This is a new podcast, so we're friends. So I can tease him a little bit. But you're going to have children. You're going to have all kinds of life events. So you save when you can. There's all different financial calculators online, which are free, that you can kind of head, go ahead and project. How much is Social Security going to pay? Um, Joy, you said that you work for the state. So you have something called a 457 or what's called deferred comp program. If you go work for an employer, you might have a 401k and they might offer a match. It's leaving money on the table if you don't take part in that match, even if you save 3% of your salary. But you so know. a lot of different components come into play. Um, this is, you know, looking at environmental issues. What happens if I buy a light bulb which dies in two weeks? or buy wine a little more expensive, but lasts for two years. You can do the amortization, see that you're actually saving money and saving the environment. You're saving the carbon footprint. So there are different ways to do it. And with inflation going up, bank accounts and interest rates will start going up also. They have to. Well, and then the other thing I do want to say is I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or anything in between. This was going to happen. It's a normal cycle. So stop yeah. blaming Biden for gas prices. If Trump was in office, they would have gone up anyway. So Absolutely. look at the root 
of the issue. So, so speaking of root, one thing which I think is interesting, and this is my own personal experience here, but you're talking about when you're first coming out of school or you're first going into the workforce, that's the ideal time to save. But if we go back to actually the root, when we're in school, we're not taught to save. We're not taught how to really look at finances. We're taught, hey, this is how you write a check. I mean, this is what I remember growing up is like, okay, you put the name here, you sign here, you have to write out the, the dollar amount here, but you're never taught to say, oh, but don't forget, you need to look at a retirement fund. You need to think about the fact that you don't want to work, keep going until literally your last breath. And it's like so, Wendy's story as well, talking about yeah. uh, credit cards, how they were throwing credit cards at her in college. And yeah. And I just put in the blinders and I'm like, you guys are evil. And I walked away. <laughs> so you're coming from a financial background. You've got kids who are right at this age now. How are you teaching them to plan for the future? I would hope, I would assume that you are, uh, since that's your job. But how, <laughs> how has that been for you? Did I mention they're my kids? So no, they don't listen to me. Um, and <laughs> in theory, in theory. <laughs> So with like the credit, I'll go back to Wendy and I'll come back here. With the credit, free credit card stuff, I used to apply for everyone in college because I knew I wouldn't get it and I would get free sunglasses. And I broke the sunglasses every week. So <laughs> there are a lot of banks right now offering like $100 free if you open up a $300 account and leave the money there for two months. Do it. There's, it's free money. Um, so, Joe, what I'm helping them look at is what are their goals? Like my son is in a, um, a startup situation. He might be able to buy a house in two years. That's his goal. He was talking about getting a one bedroom place because he could afford that. And I'm telling him, no, you're getting a three bedroom. Well, how about a two bedroom? I go, no, you're getting a three bedroom. So it's, you know, and then looking at what the difference is in costs in different in areas um my youngest the 14 year old wants a horse you know and you got to look at what an individual's goal is and all the costs associated to it right. and that's like investing so if i wanted to buy a horse that's my investment think of all the companies that go into the horse you got to feed the horse you got to house the horse you got to transport the horse what companies do all those things and that would be something to look at but everybody's goals are different. If I talk to a 25 year old about retirement, they're going to glaze over. So it's just kind of like, this is just future money. Forget about it. Yeah. This is where you want to focus now and then try to tie everything to different goals. Can I just ask a quick, well, actually a statement. I want to make a statement because I've often been very vocal about um, salaries. One, People don't publish salaries when people apply. And I've been helping some students that are recent grads. So it is, you know, they're worried about negotiating their salary if sounding too greedy or being off the mark or, or underbidding themselves. But this morning I was looking online on LinkedIn and this job came across my feed for an executive director role with a sustainability firm, a very large sustainability firm. This is all they do. And I'm like, well, that sounds awesome. At least a bachelor's degree, master's preferred, at least five years experience and a laundry list of ticket items you had to be an expert in because it is executive director. The salary, 60 grand. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? You want an ex you want Mighty Mouse for the cost of someone fresh out of college because that that salary range is fresh out of college. And that's what irritates me. We have inflation going up. We have everything going up and you want a rock star for peanuts. And these kids that I'm helping, I, I'm kind of running out of options to give them because they're, you know, they've got student debt that's probably the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they're looking at jobs that are 50, 60 grand where they have to be an expert in something. I think that might be more of an outlier. I've presented to Cal State Northridge's um, three times now with their different um, business clubs and talked about salary ranges. They are, and my son, um, they're in the sixty to seventy thousand dollar range, and not an executive director. I mean, you can ask. I'm talking about sustainability jobs. Sorry, just specifically oh. with the environmental sustainability world, which is like popping right now. Finance, yeah, finance is always going to pay pay people pretty well. Well, I'm not talking even finance. I'm talking. Oh, they were okay. looking all across the boards because they were desperate to get a job 
okay. they're fighting against everyone else. But you can ask for anything you want. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine a $60,000 executive director who has all their qualifications and who's not a retread that failed somewhere else and wants to try something else because why would they take that job? Yeah. If they have all those criteria, you could go somewhere else and make a lot more money if that's your goal. They might be thinking these are bleeding heart liberals like Joel who will work for less money in order to you know save the world. There is that. What do you think, Art, of the the whole concept of uh, the Great Resignation? This is like oh, my yeah. my total you know thing in life right now. Uh, people resigning from their jobs, you know, post pandemic to search for themselves, find themselves. Uh, pay is not as important as quality of life. Uh, take this job and shove it. <laughs> How do you think that that's going to move along in the pandemic as, as it relates to people living and quality of life? I think it's stupid. <laughs> and quite frankly, I think it's a TikTok YouTube movement that should have always been there from the start of time. If someone is a baker and hates making bread, they should change jobs. So what I've seen... Um, because I do know, I coached, I know a lot of these kids who did the resignation. It's, they wanted publicity. They wanted people to ooh, look at me, just change jobs. If you don't like working with one company, find something you like. So I think it's been going on the whole time myself, but they just kind of made a more of a media thing with it. See, I'm gonna, I, I, I will agree with that to a point because I also think that the past year of what everybody went through made them really reevaluate their lives. And I do believe that there's a great, a, a larger emphasis was placed upon quality of life. And I think that kind of forced a lot of people to just say, you know what, doing this for 15 to $20 an hour, I just can't do it. I, I can't do this anymore. And so when I understand, you know, quitting without having something else lined up, I don't, that part I don't necessarily understand, but I do, get people finally just kind of standing up for themselves. So, Cause I do think a lot of people did that to just say, I'm not going to be a frontliner who's going to be making minimum wage where I still have to go get a second job on the front line just to try to pay my bills. So I think there was that aspect to it as well. And I think we're seeing changes in corporations. I mean, right now, look at what's happening with a certain manufacturer who's basically saying we're replacing the 1400 people who are striking where, you know, so, People are, I think a lot of it is people are just stand, trying to stand up for themselves finally because they feel like they can't and they have to because they've gotten a lot of jobs have really pushed people down over yeah. the past few years. So I think there's a combination of the two. Okay. Well, a lot of those people are privileged in my mind. Some are. They, yeah, they've never had a traumatic life event, yeah. which has made them reevaluate things in the past, which is fantastic, but also who's paying their bills then yeah i mean mom right. and daddy you know how's that gonna look and well so i think there's a shift for people wanting this society to turn more socialistic and or you know socialist society so you know you know i'm doing okay so you should just be doing okay the rich people are the evil people um you know us poor people need to band together and just decide we're not going to work or we're not going to, we're going to, we're going to dictate the way, you know, work goes down. So I can, I also see it as could possibly be unsustainable and dangerous. Yeah, I agree with that. I yeah, think a lot of it comes, I'm sorry to interrupt here, but I'm actually going to push back on this one a bit. I think a lot of it is like we were saying before, we've become have versus have not. So for the past year, we have watched certain people, certain portions of our society, their their wealth has grown and grown and grown exponentially on the backs of the people that are trying to survive on minimum wage. And they're tired. And I don't blame that. I cannot fault that at all. Because there reaches a point where there has to be there has to be a chance for people to succeed. But we become for certain ways, you're either born into something or you're screwed. 
the, the option to build up wealth when you're trying to pay rent and put food on the table, gas in your car, buy a new car, put your kids through school, try to put clothes on your back. It's gotten, it's, it's getting to the point where you're trying to do $14 an hour or whatever the minimum wage is where you're at. It's, imp it's an impossible situation. And then people are saying, oh, we just moved to different areas. Great, move to another area, but then you've got an, a different cost of living and a possibly a lower, pro a lower wage. So it's not that it, there is no balance here for people to try to get to the next level. And I feel like that's what people are pushing up against, whether it's the rising cost in health care is every single thing is expensive, but the minimum wage is still staying at a low rate. How well, do people go for yeah. that? Sorry. Well, you got a couple dynamics, Joel. You have there were tax incentives because of COVID that mm -hmm. people got complacent on. And actually, a lot didn't look for work because they were making more money with those incentives. Oh. So. The other is a person's mentality. I started out making $100 a week and commission. And I was self-motivated yeah. um, to find side gigs to make more money because that that's just who I am. If someone is, has a mentality of minimum wage is enough, that's a whole different thing than somebody who wants to make more but doesn't have that opportunity. And I would challenge you i think those people could find another opportunity no they shouldn't have to work 20 hours a day but maybe they could find something just as fulfilling for them with upside potential if i can yeah. jump in real quick joel i'm i'm actually i'm in the middle ground between joel's comment and your comment so for example dan price the guy in seattle who took a massive pay cut so everyone in his company could get a minimum wage of seventy thousand a year and people said, you're stupid, you're crazy, it won't work, your company will go bankrupt. It actually, his company did quite well. Everyone was happy. He got more employees and people applied to, his, to work at his company like crazy. He gets more resumes than he can handle. There has to be a happy middle ground where I understand shareholders need to return on investment. I understand executives get highly compensated because they are taking high risk jobs. If something goes wrong, they are the only one blamed and they're the ones fired. I get that. But it's gotten so exponentially high now where the, what about, you know, people need to realize maybe making 50 million a year as salary is more than enough and maybe drop that like Dan Price did and say, OK, let's take half of that and give it back to the people in the company so they can make a better living wage. Not not bankers, not traders. You know, those guys make money hand over fist. I'm talking about the secretaries. I'm talking about admin. Those are guys that really are there 24 hours a day doing really hard work, legwork. And they're maybe not compensated as well as they should be. Well, what's brilliant about what he did, though, if you really think about it, just say he did it from a business standpoint. He was able now to recruit people he wasn't able to recruit before, hire <laughs> caliber people from before. He got positive press. And I think ultimately he could make more money. I mean, there's a certain movie um producer actor who i used to love but he said some really nasty anti-semitic things i won't give a name i won't see his movie i don't boycott i don't stand outside there's also a, a chicken franchise which doesn't follow my beliefs i've never <laughs> eaten there you know i'm just voting with my pocketbook if i knew that a company was giving living wages um i would be more than happy to do it um grubhub and uber they do have extra benefits going to them. And I do give, you know, the extra whatever it is for medical. So people will yeah. vote with their pocketbook and their conscience. You just have to, to trust people that they will. And if they don't, then you're absolutely right. Then, you know, there's a, a serious problem with somebody making billions of dollars when yeah. people are making 30 there. And yeah. that's honestly what I was trying to say is that I don't, I'm not trying to say that everybody should just get, I think we kind of got what I was trying to say here, but I think it's like, you know, what that company also did is you create a system of loyalty where you're saying, look, if I'm going to take care of you, you're going to, I know you're going to step back and take care of me as well. That's what's been missing from the world. It's literally yeah. just like, okay, you're getting $50 billion a year. You're getting 10, 50 an hour. And here's your holiday bonus of a small fry, which is going to be shared around the entire corporation. That's the, that's the, the, you know, the whole eighties mentality of greed is good. 
kind of got us into this situation. And I think yeah. what happened over this past year or two years now, or four or five, 25, whatever it is, is people woke up to that and to just say, enough. I, I, I get it, but I have to figure out a way to take care of myself. Yeah. And I think, you know, the financial aspect of it, people were able to work from home. A lot of people were more productive. A lot of people who weren't productive to begin with, they were even less productive. So those kind of things all fell. Everything just kind of became transparent. But I do believe it was a matter of people saying, okay, let's figure this out. What's, what's the balance in my life here now? And I think a lot of it came from that. But we've completely gone off topic. Yeah, I was going to say, we kind of went off track of um, social justice and financial advice. And uh, although very valid social. points, extremely valid points. And yes, society and our capitalism as a whole does need to make a small adjustment to be a little more fair. I get that. But getting back to um, people saving and people you know, living a, a decent life, um, I love the idea of a budget. I've often advised my friends um, you know, one girlfriend in particular, when I lived in New York, she's like, hey, you're good with money. You know, help me save. And I said, sure. How many days a week do you go out? She said, oh, I, I go out five days a week. Now, New York is expensive. So that's, you know, at least at the time, 100 bucks a night. And I'd say, well, you need to cut it back to two, like Friday, Saturday. She's like, I can't possibly do that. I'm like Sacrifices. Some people can't. They can't. <laughs> What do, you, what do you suggest, Art? Like baby steps? Like people cannot wrap their head around it. Yeah, ba absolute baby steps. Because what will happen, let's say Wendy, um, she did one last day. That's 400 bucks a month. pretty much a month times, you know, 12. So now she's around 5,000. When she sees that amount of money at the end of the year in her bank account, she'll get excited. When somebody has a 401k, they don't pay attention. They're putting you know, a little bit of money, they get excited. Someone has a kid um, 529 plan, the college fund, yeah. and they're putting 50 bucks a month in, and then they look on the other side and there's a lot of money. That's what they need. They need to see that. And there are a lot of financial literacy programs. Back in the day, there's a financial, the CFP program, Certified Financial Planners, they had a program for high school students. And any financial advisor could go to the high school and teach it. Problem is, and there's a whole nother issue, schools are so regimented now, they don't have the opportunity for shop, um, for cooking, for financial stuff. It's Basically. Like math, <laughs> English, and it might not be what someone Learn wants. Learn that poetry. <laughs> it, same thing, exactly. And then if the English teacher does poetry, they're off track and then they fail on the state testing. And so it kind of leads into itself, but baby steps. And then when somebody has enough emergency savings, usually four to six months, then they can start looking at investing. And the one key with investing, don't invest in something you don't understand. It's like, um, what yeah. about the fear, the fear of those online day traders, um, companies like, what is it, E-Trade and Robinhood? Those actually terrify me because I wouldn't know what I'm looking at. I may, you know, make a bad decision. And next thing I know, some people don't understand trading on margin, meaning, and please correct me, you take, you know, you take out more than you actually have and it goes south and then you owe a lot of money to somebody. Right. So let's, I'm not going to talk about particular companies. No, I'm um, just using examples. Say, because like E-Trade, Schwab, they're online trading, but there are tools to educate you. Oh, okay. So, That's good to know. Yeah, so you actually can see what you're doing. I've never used the Robinhood platform. What scares me is um, people lie. I know that shocks you, Joel. Horrible. But people will post online anything. Yeah. Um, and... Mm. LeBron James is playing polo and then somebody's going to believe that. So somebody's going to now count a stock for LeBron James's new polo mallet. And then when the stock goes up, that same person who lied about it is going to sell it. And all these other people are going to lose money. So look for credible sources, look for multiple sources, look for biases um, again, not political, but I think Fox News 
and CNN have different political viewpoints. It's not a good way to invest because one's going to tout this, the other's going to tout this. You want to do your own homework and research and think through why are you buying what you're buying? See, um, I get all my financial advice from Facebook because I just think that that's the most unbiased place you can get news. Um, we all know that people don't and have... folks, this is called sarcasm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. The so algorithm doesn't if, do if you have Facebook you, in stock, Joel, like I do, you know he has a dog. So, you, I mean, Facebook actually is a good tool because if you see somebody with new Nike shoes and you want to research Nike because you never really thought about them and then you do homework and see they have slave labor going on in other countries, and I'm making a joke, but maybe don't you, don't, well, <laughs> you don't want to invest in them because they're not socially responsible or maybe you don't care. You're into it for the profit. It's up to you, but those are the ways you find investments is looking behind um, people's Facebook posts. You know, for Christmas, they just bought some new company's sweater and then research the company. I actually think that that's a great outlook to have because a lot of people, as we're, we're we get caught up in the images that we see. And so, and I think this also plays into our financial world is that we get caught in keeping up with the Joneses. And so when you're scrolling through Instagram, you're scrolling through Facebook or whatever social media platform we're on, you're like, oh, look at all this stuff that they're doing. I've got to do more to keep up to this. And it starts spiraling, but we, we've kind of lost track. That, like, these are just images. This may not be reality. And so like the person that you're seeing who's got the high end of everything may be struggling to pay the rent on their studio apartment and they're about to be evicted because they're trying to have every single thing high More end. More often than not, that image. is true. But we lose sight of that. And I think that plays a lot into our financial well-being because we are, we're, we're so inundated with these images that everything is luxe. Everything has to be high end. Everything is this, 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 this versus saying it, it's fine. What you have is great and appreciate it and enjoy it. You know, take pride in that. You don't have to have all this stuff. You need to be able to retire. You need to be able to plan for an emergency. And I think that we're, we've lost sight. We lose sight of that very fast, I think. I do. Oh, I my do. son, you know, and he's on a plane right now, so he won't hear this. But he was like buying tennis shoes, like 20, 30, 40. And uh, they're sneakers. actually, I guess, an investment now. But it's like, dude, you said you wanted to buy a house. And, you know, that adds up. Bringing That's him back to center. Yeah. Bringing mm -hmm. him back to center. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, buying an expensive point. watch. You know, a five dollar watch keeps just as good time, and your cell phone has a clock feature. <laughs> so why Imagine spend that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. No, this is all brilliant advice, and we're we're coming up to our half hour mark. So, um, Art, I'll let you just close out with, if you know, I don't know if um, Trusted Capital Group is taking on clients actively right now, or, or if you're building out, but if you want to share how people can find you and any parting words that I. That'd be great. Yeah, always um, happy to help. Um, probably LinkedIn, just find me um, is the easiest way and reach out. Um, but find somebody to talk to. And you can talk to a financial advisor and gulp, not pay for that call. And just because every financial advisor should be asking the same things. You know, what are your goals? You know, what's your age? What's your risk tolerance? And do you have a budget um, with, do you have other investments? And diversification's key. Yeah. You know, everyone's so excited about Bitcoin. Well, guess what? If Bitcoin goes down and that's all you have, everything you have goes down. But if you own other things, like Joel has about 20 real estate properties. So if one of his neighborhoods uh -huh. in Bel Air goes down, the <laughs> other one might go up um, with them. But it's... If you have solar panels, you have like 20 on your roof. If one of the solar panels goes out, and I know this isn't engineering 101, you know, probably the whole system would go out, but pretend it doesn't. Pretend just one panel goes out, out of those 10. So you're losing 10%, but you still have 90%. Yeah. So think of that in the investing world. If you invest in 10 different things, one goes down, you have nine others to help support you. That is brilliant advice. So I got to say, I don't understand cryptocurrency. 
No. Then don't invest in it. Oh, no, I'm not going to because I literally right. cannot wrap my head around that. And now there's the new real estate and the metaverse that people are purchasing. I genuinely, I cannot wrap my head around it. I just can't. Real estate in the metaverse? Yeah, that's the new, that's a big one right now. That's a what? big one. Yeah. Pretend like Elon Musk on Mars, right? It's it's a huge, it's actually making a ton of money right now. People are spending a lot of money on but that. But what do you actually, okay, that's a conversation for later. Yeah. For next time, yeah. 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 We're, we're definitely going to see you this next year and this coming year. And I'm sure exciting things are going to be uh, happening. Lots of shift going on and yeah. you will be able to help us navigate it. Thank, Thank you. you. And so, yeah, guys, find Art Wexler. He's on LinkedIn. He's very responsive. Trust me. That's how I communicate with him. So, and a, um, and a lot of fun. I mean, just the very sarcastic, fun. as we learned, very sarcastic, very sarcastic, but smart guy, very good at retirement. So um, on that, thank you guys so much. We will see you next time. And this is our last live broadcast for 2021. Oh, so we will see you guys. Holidays. And we ended it with art. Yeah. yeah and I'm sorry. So <laughs> next year will be a better year. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Happy Bye. holidays.